Hi, everyone. I'm Munira Khalif, and I'm the sixth U.S. Youth Observer to the United Nations, and we're coming to you live from the U.N. headquarters, and I have a really special guest today with me, Ellie Golding. Thank you so much for, for joining us um, and talking about this really important discussion on climate change. Uh, and so I am going to give a brief bio um, of, of Ellie's kind of work, but honestly, she needs no introduction. Um, Ellie is a global superstar and has been recognized for her, um, her artistry in music and has had songs that have topped the charts. Um, but she's also a really passionate advocate, whether it's uh, regarding homelessness to climate change, which we'll be discussing today. So thanks again for joining us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so I wanted to, to start out by asking you about why it's important, um, as someone who has such a strong following, to really leverage your platform to spotlight this issue of climate change. Um, thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I think when I started talking about climate change initially, it was it was quite a daunting thing for people to to try and digest. Um, but I think when I realised that there was a way of um, speaking and a way of reaching out that was that was sort of easy to take in, um, then I saw how easy it was to reach you know millions of people at once in one go and um you know i i do i do wish ultimately that there were there were more people sort of in my position but i see more and more people talking about it every day and, and i personally think that climate change is is our biggest issue it's exacerbating every situation that's already not great in the world um and as we've seen from natural disasters recently um having that many hurricanes in a row is not normal and so really i think i think young younger people especially are starting to see that it's it's um an issue and starting to confront it but it's really just now um, having those people to communicate it and go, coming from the UN and coming from the, the expertise and the scientists and the people who are you know, really doing the data um, uh, and coming from there all the way through to people following me on my social media wondering when my album's coming out or you know or when I'm releasing new music which is probably not for a while um, but um, but yeah so, so really I, I feel like people like me um, who have that platform need to be the sort of gateway between the experts and the UN um, and the sort of higher powers um, and then you know the average person who wants to know what they can do in their everyday life to make a difference. Yeah. No, that was a really powerful point with, with regards to kind of being a bridge between, you know, this high level work that's being done and, and kind of everyday, everyday people who want to get involved. Um, so in terms of, uh, you know, inspiration, I think in order to act, we need to be inspired by something. Mm -hmm. What is it that inspires you? Why do you do the work that you do? I think it probably was born from me growing up in the countryside and we were just talking earlier about how hectic New York is and New York really is one of the most vibrant, incredible places in the world but my goodness, it is intense. Um, but grow, growing up in, in, in the country and being around nature, you know I grew up in a very small house and you know it was cramped and it was, you know, it wasn't my my escape was the going out to the countryside and walking and running and um and sort of really being at one with nature and being sort of connected with nature without having to try it was just kind of you know innately um this um connection and this appreciation and respect for the natural world and um i think i've always been um sort of an activist even in even just in you know talking about things and and uh you know the the environment always being such an important thing to me yeah. um it comes up it's always come up in conversations and whatever else and um i think having that connection and having that appreciation when when things start going wrong and you start seeing climate change on your doorstep and seeing it for yourself you start really understanding that all those things that you've grown up with and that you've you've been immersed in are going to go away at some point and i think that one of the one of the main things is is not you know not trying to create doom and gloom but helping people understand what is at stake and what is going to be gone in you know the not too distant future um and i'm i'm passionate about about beautiful wildlife about majestic creatures about you know the, these these animals these these animals that we all know and love polar bears and 
gorillas and elephants and and you know every single species on this planet and including us are going to be affected by climate change and are being affected right now so i i want my kids and i want future generations to be able to enjoy the same things that i've enjoyed um and that we're enjoying at the moment but you know that simply will not last forever and the way the way that we are um going now um and uh the 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 sort of the the lack of action um is going to make for you know quite a bleak future P -p action is being taken and people are doing incredible things but i think that the thing to emphasize is not enough is being done and not quickly enough and on that note of action right um you know what you know there are a lot of young viewers that are watching yeah. um who who are inspired by you know your platform and 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 want to get involved what can they do to kind of take that first step in terms of either raising awareness or acting on the issue of climate change yeah i think like like we said earlier is like it is quite a daunting thing um but but i think young people in particular really have the power and have more power than you realize um and um you know even if you're not old enough to vote which obviously is is crazy important to do given the last election um but um but yeah so it, it's obviously if you're old enough to vote that's always important it's always you know going out there and and making a stand and voting for the person you think will will take the most climate action um but if you're not old enough um you know it's quite easy as we were saying earlier to start a petition um and i know you guys are much more tech savvy than i certainly am um so um you know you can if there's something you feel particularly passionate about and you want change you you really can make that happen um and um you know you can summon your friends summon other people who share that interest um you can you know when i was at school we had assemblies and we used to occasionally get to talk about things in assembly and and talk about you know even, you know even just like mundane things or, or whatever but um but now i think you know you you have an opportunity to speak and say something and inspire other people and it's you know the power of um talking and and um uh, and talking about something you're very passionate about um you know it really is catching it really is a, you know it, it really does have an effect so um if you can ha take that opportunity to to talk about things and to keep the conversation going um but also you know it, things that you can do sort of right now you know as you you know tomorrow or you know this week as you can cut down on your meat consumption and when i first stopped eating meat about 6 years ago i i found it hard to to link um in the environment with meat but obviously it's become more and more obvious now that it's the connection between how much water goes into um uh meat and how much uh of the environment has to has to um sort of be sacrificed to rear animals um and i'm not saying you know go like full out vegetarian now like stop eating all animal products whatever but but even cutting down a couple of days a week on meat um you know is the equivalent of taking hundreds of thousands if not millions of cars off the road um which i know it's hard to sort of link that but um there was like i said i'm not an expert but you can you know can read countless articles about the connection between climate change and you know cows producing stupid amounts of methane and stuff like that so there really are people who are experts at this but um but it is sort of now in the science that that um that yeah that's 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 the first step you know obviously there's things like recycling and you know maybe taking the bus instead of driving or sharing a car there's things like that but um i think once you become more mindful yeah. of of the environment and you know everything you're using your products um you know you can use products that don't have microbeads in which are small bits of plastic that go straight out into the ocean um or you know just having that mindfulness of of the things you wear the things you do um the food you eat i think that's a great starting point no 100% i i really think you know that you know that mindfulness and that being a conscious consumer is yeah. really yeah. at the at the core of all of this yeah. um and you mentioned a couple of times that you know this these these issues that have such you know a big scope can be daunting to young people yeah. and we can kind of you know you know even i can speak you know personally on this sometimes underestimating the power of your own voice like how do you overcome that how do you overcome that obstacle I think I don't know I mean for for me when I uh, when I realized that there were other people around me as passionate as I was and um you know 
maybe hadn't looked into it as much as me, but, you know, fundamentally wanted change and wanted people to act more about uh, climate change and the fact that it's now on everybody's doorstep is, you know, it, it is a scary thing. It's scary to see that the world is changing drastically. Um, and, you know, even if we make, um, even if we all stopped driving cars today, you know, there's still going to be like a, a backup sort of, of, of the past however many years. But I think really once you get together with other people and um, you have that common cause and you come together, it's much less daunting. And um, you can see, you can research the incredible positive things that are happening and, and the effect that young people have. And what did you mention earlier, the, the, ki the kids in Oregon? Was it Oregon who would... Who would yeah, who put together a case uh, to kind of hold the U.S. accountable for acting on climate change. And God, if that's not inspiration, no, that's incredible. And, you know, every every young person has a voice and every young person is capable of using it. And, and you know, that is your strength. And, and I think it's it doesn't have to be scary, but it's actually quite empowering and quite quite an amazing feeling. 100%. Um, yeah, no, I agree. I think creating this optimism, you spoke about it earlier in your remarks that, you know, these, you know, these issues of climate change, it can seem kind of, you know, like we don't have as much control, but really yeah. taking the power back and, yeah. and shedding the, you know, light on what is actually being done yeah. is a really powerful mechanism to actually create change. Um, so I wanted to um, wrap up with a bit of a fun question. So I, as of late, have been really getting into working out and you are definitely one of the artists that are on my playlist and get me really pumped up for working out and I know you're big into kickboxing so what's on your playlist what gets you kind of pumped for a workout do you know my my friends are all like um teasing me because I've only just discovered Post Malone and they're like where have you been like have you been like hiding under a rock somewhere in Greenland which actually I was in Greenland a couple of weeks ago um but um but uh yeah so I'm really enjoying Post Malone at the moment but my all my friends will be watching this like god cringe um but um yeah so so yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Um, you know, I love love a bit of classic Drake, like old school Drake. Um, I I listen to a bunch of sort of when it comes to really hardcore working out. I do love drum and bass and garage, which are two types of music that I don't think has reached over here um, completely. Um, but um, drum and bass is sort of it's so funny me trying to explain drum bass, but um, it was it was a big thing in London where I'm where I I live, and um, and so was Garage, and so um, do check it out if you haven't. But there's a you know the whole world of drum and bass and Garage and sort of underground London music that I like to listen to. But actually, I know a lot of a lot of young people say to me like, how do you switch off? Because you know with all this information and all these things um, happening in the world. Um, sometimes you just kind of want to switch off and, and I listen to a lot of classical music and not just like old classical music that you kind of think of traditionally as being classical music but there are lots of young new composers like making beautiful music with orchestras and um, you know just on piano and strings and um, like Ludovico Inaudi is one of them um, chills you right out uh, Max Richter is another guy Oliver Arnold's um, and they make this stunning, peaceful music that you don't necessarily, it's not music to fall asleep to, but it's music to kind of, you know, to, to you, yeah. yeah, center you and not, you know, think all these thoughts, but, um, but to just kind of have a moment to, you know, realize that there's a lot of beauty out there in music and in the world. And, um, yeah, so, so classical music is definitely something I would recommend at the moment in the world's chaos. That's a really beautiful point to end on and definitely some great recommendations even for me and as well as the viewers. Um, thank you again so much for joining us and for taking the time to do this. And for all of you who are watching, please stay tuned uh, and check out the uh, the UN Foundation um, account uh, for a live stream of Ellie's performance tonight. Thanks again. Go Veggie. <laughs>